Hi, everyone. Mm. We're on. <laughs> I, was, I was busy hydrating. Sorry. Hey, everybody. We're live from beadshop.com. Beadshop.com headquarters here in Redwood City, California. I'm Kate Richburg, and this is the lovely <laughs> Janice Parsons. And Hi, we're everyone. back. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You guys, we've been running around like crazy here this morning. You know, we've been, I don't know, maybe it's because it's December already. How did it get to be December? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was just planning Thanksgiving dinner. It right. Just, it's, now it's December and it's gifts and, and it's time. New Year's and yeah. then it's Valentine's Day. And but, we've started planning some great right, things for 2017. Right. We had a great planning meeting, Janice and I, yesterday. and. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, it's time for Facebook Live. Let's get yeah. to the table. So it's great to see you guys. Thank you so much. Question, Gracie? No, Robin, Krista, Christine, they all say hello. Oh, mm. hi. Hi, everybody. Good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever it is you are. You know, it's been kind of a cool, um, <clears throat> a couple of cool things I want to shout out. First of all, you know, here at BeadShop.com, we're kind of a small family, a small group of us. And um, one of our very own, you know, our lovely camera woman, Grace. It's Grace's Yay. birthday yes. today. Yes, happy birthday, So Gracie. happy birthday thank to you, guys. Gracie. Thank you. Yeah. It's thank you. great. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And Janice came up with kind of a cool idea. What was your, you had a shout out idea this morning. Well, I remember Garrison Keeler, um, at home, uh, Prairie Home Companion, mm -hmm. The first thing they would shout out, oh, someone's anniversary or someone's special occasion or their birthday. And we thought, wouldn't this be fun if viewers out there wanted us to mention somebody that yeah. we could do that at the beginning of the hour? Yeah, like a birthday or yeah. an anniversary or, yeah. hey, good job, you. Yeah. yeah. So uh, text us. Is that what they do? Well, they should probably email. Email. Is that what it goes <laughs> they on? Could. They could. Or they could just they can post it. it. Just yeah. They post it. Okay. Yeah, message it in, okay. or you can always email it in, and we'll okay. be glad yeah. to mention it. Your mom um, says hi. Oh, hi, Mama. Uh, hi. And there's Gwenda. Hi, Gwen. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Oh. oh. Yay, everybody. Well, it's fun when we have a birthday. I know. It yeah. is. We get food and cake yeah. and flowers and yeah. balloons. Balloons. And yeah. So it's Later, there's, yeah. there may or may not be cake. You never know. I think there yes. is too. Um, I also wanted to mention we got a couple of cool things. I got a couple of great emails this week. One was from um, Helene in Finland. And um, Helene uh, has been beating a while. But Helene gathers her friends mm -hmm. all the way over in Finland. Wow. And they watch our Facebook Live posts, <clears throat> our broadcasts. And she sent some photos of some of the things that she's made. She um, made some loomed pieces with leather on the end, did some really cool Ooh. stuff. Ooh. They look really great. So so a big hello out there to our Finland friends. Gaynor says hi from St. Helens, England, and Malta from Germany. Oh, wow. well, hi, you guys, and welcome. Hello, hello. It's great to have yeah. you. Yeah. So before we get started about this Battle of the Boards, Janice. Yes. Because it's going to be a just, big... Just relax, Kate. You know you're going down. It may be. It may turn. <laughs> you never know. This is live. That's but right. But I wanted to ask you, do you know what I did this morning? Uh, you drove to work. I did. And I had like three cups of coffee. Okay. And I watched a kitty cat video. Oh. But <laughs> I also, not only that, I thought, you know, we're kind of, with our year winding down and stuff, I'm looking at our projects and things for next year. Did you know that we have over, on our project page, on our website, mm -hmm. over 55 different projects? Wow. Wow. Right? No. no. I, right? I actually didn't either. I counted them. I mean, I think the gray hairs on my head attest to that. Well. The curly hair, at least. Well. I started out with hair like you, and <laughs> right. then after 55 projects, years, it's like and this, 40 years right? of the bead shop, this is, you this know. This is what you yeah, get. Yeah, so. Well, with 55. That's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. With 55. So, if you guys, if you go to our projects page, and I actually have my computer here. So, if you go to projects, I don't know, Gracie, if you can see this, but here I am on our front page of our website. If you go over here to projects, you guys, and you go over and you scroll down, these are all of the different projects we have. And so there's 55 different cubes. And they don't include, you guys, Beater Showcase. They don't include our things like our lookbook 
and they also don't include skill our builder. skill builders here. And if you click through to skill builders, you guys, they also don't include our giant group of class handouts. Now, those of you who watched our pearl knotting um, and wire episode broadcast last week, in the class handouts you were familiar with, we just scroll on down and we scroll on down, and that was the pearl knotting handout there. So all of these class handouts um, are from the days of when the bead shop was a brick and mortar store, and these were the handouts that we used in our in-person live classes. So with over 55 projects, plus skill builders, plus class handouts, plus the lookbook, plus beater showcase, there's like at least five to ten designs, maybe even more under those projects. That gives you like 500 or more, samples, more. different samples. Can right? we open up Tricks to Laddering sure. and just go, go back to projects yeah. and open up? Um, so we're scrolling, we're scrolling. There, there, it's right here. Right, yeah. so tricks to Laddering. Samples? So Not under Tricks there. to Laddering, we have, let's see, 4, 8, 12, 16, 16 18. 18 samples. 18. And then if you click on one mm. of those, and are those also now the three new samples? that? We yeah, have? well, those are going to be up. They actually get, this. we're doing a little preview today. There's going to be the new samples. Be so up then tomorrow. they'll be 21. Mm -hmm, they'll be 21. So click on one of those samples. Shall we click on Midnight yeah. Snow? And then... You just you we just want to show the page. There's the sample, and you scroll down. We talk about a project map. Oh, there are the ingredients. All of the ingredients. If there's a PDF that you need right. to download, it's here. And the cool thing, you know, before let me make sure this is all, all right. turned up nice and bright. The cool thing that I thought that was genius, you know, before I came back on board um, at beadshop.com. This was my number one go-to when I look yeah. at a project yeah. with you guys. The project map, we lay out the project so it's completely, uh, you can see it and it's uh, the, the whole complete thing. And if there's any notes or design notes or things, they're always underneath. And then here, if we go to the About tab, you see who made the sample, who did the design. And there's also some skill builders, things like that. And the cool thing, you guys, I don't know if you've seen this, but if you click right here, it makes it easy to add all of that stuff right into um, your shopping cart. And you have a nice visual there of everything. And then there's tools. And if you need, if there's a video that goes along with it, the video's in the video tab right there. So could you just do one more thing and sure. click, click on the download PDF? Sure. So... Um, this is where, uh, that's one of the handouts we're going to talk mm -hmm. about today. And if, I don't know how many pages this it's is. It's a lot of pages. Yeah, it's a lot of pages. <laughs> a lot of, it's, a lot of well, this pages. Is, this is eight, eight pages. pages. Mm -hmm. There's another sample we're going to talk about today for a honeycomb uh, weave. That's 18 pages. 18 pages. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all free. Yeah. They're all absolutely. The um, learning content. Just yeah. clicking. I want to scroll. I'm scrolling on my screen. I don't have that kind of computer. Uh, there we go. If you just, that top projects pet, um, little thing right there, you guys, that's like the magic button. When you click on that, that is your gateway to everything. The other thing I wanted to share, it's something that's new this week. One of the things that we've got from our customers, they've been asking about, you know, past Facebook Live broadcasts, where do I find all the stuff? So we're making it easier and easier, and it's still a little bit of a work in progress. But if you go right here onto the front of our homepage, you can see there's a Facebook Live button, and you just click right there, and that whisks you away to um, an index shot of and eventually all of our backlog of all of the Facebook lives we've done previously but this one for today laddering and infinity um, if you click on that it has some of the details and of course we'll always add things maybe after the broadcast as well but this is the project that we're going to be working on today 
Um, and it's a sneak peek of one of the projects that we're uh, debuting on our site tomorrow. But it has a, a shopping list, it has the skill builders, and then of course it has just a nice photo of the piece. We'll probably lay it out with the project map and add some more photos there. But it's a way to have everything live there. Now after the broadcast, you guys, there's going to be a video tab once we get it uploaded. So you can see the one from last week. Let me go back. Let me click on the nodding, our epic nodding and wire broadcast. Right here you can see, oh, and it's not actually going to be a video tab. It's just going to live right here in the about. And you can click right there and you can watch all of the, um, all of the broadcasts. If you just want to see the videos only, you'll just click right here and here's a list. Just the videos. And you click on like Wild About Wire and there it is. You can watch it. So you've got some different ways that you can watch our broadcasts. You can always watch them on our Facebook Live page under videos. You can watch them here on our website and they're also archived on our beadshop.com um, uh, YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, I'm, I don't know that much about Facebook. So I think it was important for, because we had many customers writing in, like me, who would say, well, I don't have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. but we've made our Facebook so anybody yeah, can go anybody to it. Can yeah, go to it. So yeah, our Facebook Live is yeah. public, so you don't have to uh, actually be on Facebook or be right. a member of Facebook right. to, to do that. So we really appreciate your comments and your shares when you share this broadcast. It's so, it's great, and we are so gratified that we're able to reach people from all over. So a big thank you. How are we doing? Questions, Gracie, or shall we jump no, in? Just a bunch should we of get hellos. started? Uh, Gita, Susan, Rebecca, and Rebecca says that she loves Project Maps. Oh, great. Oh, good. Yeah. We, we, just one last thing. Mm -hmm. Many, many people love Beater Showcase, and we're sorry that we don't have Project Maps because we don't have the actual samples mm -hmm. here. They're from the actual participants. Right. So yeah. we're hoping in 2017 that we get more photos mm -hmm. from the viewers who submit that um, with this sample laid out so mm -hmm. we can see it. For project um, maps. And could we just for a second, because we're on Beater Showcase, talk a little bit about Lauren Hartman? Mm -hmm. Because she started on Beater Showcase. Yeah. And we have... Uh, really uh, loved what she does and then everybody also loved what she does and so we've had her do a sample for us which is going up next week. Yeah, it's a little bit of a sneak peek. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> Lauren did uh, a herringbone uh, on two millimeter for like a man, mm -hmm. a gift for a man, and then a three wrap um, on 1.5 leather, mm -hmm. both using um, the new Super Duos and some of our new um, tiles, Checkmates right. tiles. Checkmates tiles and some of our new colors of right. our four millimeters. So, um, but she started on Beater Showcase, on Beater Showcase and then yeah. in the Autumn Lookbook and everybody wanted to know how does she do her herringbone weave stitch. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we have our version up, and then uh, Lauren has done her own version, mm -hmm. which we are um, we're going to post next yeah. week. And so this is going to be it's a little we've got some great kits coming up and stuff for this, so right. it's a little bit of a sneak peek right. for you guys. Right. I so, just thought you know, you know shout out to yeah, your showcase for sure. I'm going to slide those over there. Look at that. Look at that slide. Uh, yeah, our, our customers the, and our, our viewers. Out yes, there. we yeah. love it. Yeah. So, okay. all right, Janice, the time has come. Yes, yes. So, I... Yes, what do you want to say? I, I, don't, I don't even know. I don't know what to say. Um, so, lathering is a really kind of a, a staple here at beadshop.com. Doing ladder bracelets and kind of um, doing that, just different variations on the basic laddering right. technique. So one of the first things, when I came back on board um, earlier this year, Janice said to me, just start by making a ladder bracelet. For goodness sakes, let's get you beating, get right. away from that metal. I'm never getting away from the metal. Um, but it's so good to be back beating. So she said, you know what? Make yourself a ladder bracelet. So, uh, so I did. And I started, I grabbed, gravitated right towards this macrame board. Now this macrame board, um, I was introduced to it a few years ago. Um, Ann Dilker, who was the 
don't know. It's um, the that way. It's the glare. glare. Can Sorry. you see it? Yeah. How about Am I good? I, Do you uh, want to close I'll it? I'll close it. Okay. Um, Ann Dilker, who was the designer of this macrame board, um, we were um, at a beading event together, and that's how I was actually introduced to it. And I thought that it was super genius for macrame, micro macrame. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. I'll Look just, at that. Uh, not only are we talented, we're also um, so our crew. Also crew. Look at that, we're also the crew. That's so much better, thank you. Great. See? Beauty of live. Um, so I really loved it. So I gravitated right towards this. So when I started using it, I this is a project I have on it right here for laddering. Mm -hmm. And I like it because it's so small. It's easily it's portable. You know, I travel a lot still to teach and to different shows and stuff. So this is a great project to take on the plane. It fits actually right into my computer case. Mm -hmm. So I can have my computer and my project together. And I'm going to show you how, um, how I set this up. But Janice, you tell, uh, you tell the folks out there uh, <laughs> what you're doing well, with this one. Well, um, today I want to talk about two different things. One is using oh using uh the design tray mm -hmm. we know a lot of people a lot of our customers have design trays mm -hmm. um, we've taught many of our projects on the design tray and so i want to show uh we really haven't focused on the infinity stitch where we ladder with the needle up till now we've really done pretty much um traditional laddering mm -hmm. on on the board, mm -hmm. but with two threads like going back and in forth. and out right. like this. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when I discovered this, but I know that I needed to do something when um, we got in these uh, beads called honeycomb. Will you hold that a second? Yeah, while and I, would you hand me uh, the? It seems like you, you have want, both of the cutters over there too. I do. See, I, I love the cutters. Wrong. So oh, no. uh, give me my Zorong cutter. So I just want to mention that when it came time to doing this project, which is with a honeycomb bead, um, it was impossible to do laddering from either side from back because and forth. Mm -hmm. the bead holes are just so wonky. Like, it's a difficult bead. In fact, we've discontinued the bead <laughs> um, because it was just difficult. I, we can't even think of another project to use them with. They're so difficult. Um, for us at least. Other people may say, hey, I love that bead. Mm -hmm. But for us, it really wasn't a fit. However, the Infinity Stitch, which is using a needle, works really well with Super Duos. So for like Lauren Hartman's bracelets, um, where you have also a two-hole bead, Right, like, like that this. super duo or the tile. It works great with mm -hmm. a needle. It also, I find, goes faster mm -hmm. um, when you're doing the infinity stitch. Versus so, the traditional back and forth laddering. Right. So mm -hmm. I wanted to mm -hmm. just demo today the infinity stitch where you use the thread double mm -hmm. and infinity stitch where you're going through with a, th with a single thread. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I've gotten this prepared here and I just want to show you guys the way that I start with this traditional laddering and then Janice is going to get her stuff all she's all set up there um, what I've done with my um, ladder and we have under your how to ladder under this skill builder how to ladder you can see on the back here how a lot of times we start our ladder bracelets with a little bit of macrame one of the other ways that you can start them is to just tie a simple knot and start it from there. Now, Gracie, if you pull out here a little bit, you can see I've got my button here and I've got my long piece of leather here. And I've also run my thread that I'm going to do the laddering with. I've run it through the back of this button. Now, I'm just going to really easily tie an overhand knot kind of like we did with our pearl knotting knot. It's the same type of knot that we did last week. And I'm going to tighten everything up. Now, we want to just make sure we can, again, kind of like we did the pearl knotting, I split my threads a little bit and I make sure that's nice and tight. Now, this connection here takes the place of doing this macrame. So if you find the macrame daunting. If you're like, oh my gosh, I, I can ladder, but I can't macrame. 
well, you can, but if you find it a little daunting or if you want something that has a little more of a rustic kind of feel to it, this knot is a good way to go. Then the way that I connect it to this board is, now I like to work on the front. And when I was showing Janice this, she goes, you work on the front, I work on the back. And the back doesn't have all of this grid and everything. I kind of like the grid because then I can kind of see you know, it helps me kind of measure things. But for today, I'm actually going to use the back of the board so it's nice and clear. Thank but you. But you can use... You're welcome. Yeah. It's for you. Well, it's just... A little it's shout really out for noisy you. to me. Yeah. I don't Visually like noisy. noisy. Yeah. I don't like noisy when I bead. When you bead. I don't. I, I like a little... Yeah, I don't I like, like a little yeah. thing. Um, so to just measure the way I measure is I just kind of wrap this around and I know that I'm going to want maybe three wraps and I kind of look at that and I go okay that's about right or maybe I want four wraps there that looks about right and I'm not going to lock my thread in and I'm going to come in and I'm going to tie that overhand knot. So it's N not too exact. Not it's, too it's... exact and you can as you get a little further down um, or when you close this piece off you can adjust it at the end like when Grace when you were doing one of our strong point samples. You made the strong point sample and then you took it off and you went, oh my gosh, it's way longer than the other ones. And all Grace did was backed it up, backed it out a little bit, took a few beads off and adjusted the length that way. So it's not the end of the world. Now the cool thing about this is when we add our, our, um, our thread uh, onto this to attach it to the board, I'm just going to add, you use actually that twine, Janice, which was kind of cool. I do. Cool. I, am, <clears throat> I might actually try that. I am like, so while you are doing that, mm -hmm. can I yeah. just share how I set up the board with twine? Do it. Okay, so I, take, I cut a piece of twine. It's just cotton. Get it at a hardware store or a fabric store. Yeah, like your, you know, yeah, thread kitchen the button, twine. And then I loop. I loop the cotton twine around it, and I I am all about the binder clip. And then I take I take the ends, and I'll sh talk about that in a second. But I flip it over, and I have a small knot at the end of my leather, and then I tie the twine to it. Um, and as I'm laddering, all I do is I undo the clip and move it around and that's it and the, I, I usually like to put a spool of something underneath to lift it up a little bit and I open up these a little bit so that um, I get a V to start with mm -hmm. if so I, it's open right and, and if I really ladder. need a little bit more of a V I might put something like this in it mm -hmm. and push it up so that I have this nice opening oh. here if I need that so that I can go wider or th not as wide. And so that's just my little homespun way of doing it. That's a it. great tip though. Um, if I have a really long bracelet to do, then again, I have my twine up here. Just, just disregard, mm -hmm. I'll move this out. Um, I've wrapped my button. Um, and sometimes it's even easier starting where you're seeing the back of the button. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wrap it around and I keep going around. Mm -hmm. Bring it around. I bring time. it around as many times as I need to. And how do I show you? And then you just not. It's knotted here. So I loop the cotton cord around and tie and that knot. There it is. Uh, Christina says she can't wait to see how you move it around because she's constantly cutting twine and retying it. So she's really looking forward to seeing how you move your piece. How you as just you're oh, Okay. Yeah. So why don't we do that right now? Let's say. I've laddered this much and I want to move it around, okay? So I can just, it's loose so enough. So you've removed your binder clip. And removed the binder and clip. And removed that little, um, the spool, little lifter, the spool. Right. So see how everything is loose. So now. everything, you should be able to just go like this um, and put your cord back in. If it's, if it's gotten too loose on you, Christine, then just unknot your uh, twine mm -hmm. and tighten it up again. Um, sometimes if I don't want to do that, I'm just too lazy, I'll just go like this and I'll put another thing underneath it. 
And, and that well, keeps the tension yeah. to keep it taut. Yeah. That's yeah. great. But that's all you do is you just keep moving Because it's it. one big circle. It's very much mm -hmm. like a like our uh, design loom mm -hmm. where you just move it around mm -hmm. as you need to. Does that help? Does that answer the question? That looks good. Okay, good. So all the right. way that, and while this is in our minds, and then Janice is going to start with this, with her laddering as well. So what I've done with the board here is you can see I brought just like Janice did I brought my twine around the back and I pulled it through but instead I use these little um, little openings here at the top of the board I've got my twine through and I've wrapped my cord here and I can kind of tighten it in down there to keep everything tight if I want to and then here on the back, you guys, let me put a piece of paper underneath so you can see how I'm going to knot this. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to say mm -hmm. uh, to Christine, when you put the binder clip back on, it also tightens it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, the binder clip, clip just yeah. keeps it all tight. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So nice. there's my tension again. Mm -hmm. Nice. So here, and this is how I tie that, that knot to get it tight, my cotton thread... Or you can use tough cord or whatever thread you have, but this cotton thread is nice because it's so big. I'll come in and I'll tie, just kind of, you can tie it in a bow or a square knot to tie it nice and tight. And then you can see I'm going to be ready to ladder, and I like using my little, again, a little lifter. You could use just about anything. But I think it's super handy to just use my little tough cord guy and lift that up so I have some space there. Now I'm ready. You can see where I've knotted my tough cord in my knot, and I'm ready to start laddering. Now, with the laddering stitch <clears throat> on our How to Ladder, you can see the first... The first bead, you guys, is super important when you're laddering. Um, you don't want to, even if you're like your laddering stitch is going to be, you're going to use um, more than one bead if it's going to be pretty wide, you want to taper. Okay, so you can see this has the macrame, but this could be a knot here. We start with just one single bead. So I'm just going to jump in. Grace, so you guys can see this, and then Janice is going to start infinitying. But you can see my equal tails, so I'm going in from both sides. So I'm going to start by, I'm going to come up, I'm going to put on my bead. My favorite thing to ladder with are these shadows and little shadows. The hole is so large. And can you see, I'm using tough cord number three, you guys. And the tough cord number three is stiff enough that I don't need a needle, so I'm not using a needle there. So have you, just question Kate, before mm -hmm. you chose your cord, mm -hmm. you checked I did. That you could get all of your beads. I did. Through, mm -hmm. um, through this cord. Through that size mm -hmm. double. That's and, like, and especially with beads that are check, that have plating on them, mm -hmm. or especially um, uh, semi-precious, you can't check just right. one bead. No. You need to check like at least three or four beads. And that's the thing with, you know, going back to when you're choosing your thread. What is your, you know, look at your beads. What job does your thread have to do? Does it have to fit through all of these particular, you know, these particular bead holes? You know, what's it going to, what does it need to do? So can you see how you just start to line up your beads right here? Now with this one, I'm going to move this over. And you can see as I've, this is the one that I started earlier. You can just come in and you can jump in and start to change your beads up. You can see that I went to these larger, all pieces from our um, tribal collection. 
but I wanted to point this part, portion out just real quick. See how I just used single beads and then I had just these little double beads that I went back to a single bead. The cool thing about laddering, I think, is you can use almost any bead mm -hmm. as long as you make that little transition of gradually going out and coming back in, going out and coming back in. So you don't make too large of a leap so you have a funny gap or if your bead starts to pop out. But I'm a big fan. I like the meditative in and out, laddering back and through because the way that I choose my beads, you guys, and it's just how I string, I start by just kind of getting all of my little beads out together and just kind of seeing where the pattern starts to take me. So that's why I love the portability of this board and, um, you know, the sides. Like if I put this away, I can put my little tails right here and hang on to the side of the board. So I can throw this around, throw it in my suitcase when I travel, all of that, and it's still in pretty good shape. I do think that it does benefit from a binder clip that I find that they loosen up, yeah. loosen up, mm -hmm. and that the binder clips help, help it. But mm -hmm. I do like the macrame mm -hmm. board. I do. Um, and I have to say that with the Infinity Stitch, you can still be as creative as you want with your different beads. Yes, it's just you can. a different, a different stitch. way. All right. So. Well, Janice. Okay. So, Why don't you show what, us? Okay. Is this thing okay. on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to continue. All right. I'm going to continue to ladder. Okay. So um, we're going to start with um, laddering with the infinity stitch. The, Im the important thing to remember is that there's one side and only one side that you add beads. It's very much like looming. Mm -hmm. You add beads from one side. So if you need to, you could put a little... Um, a or add a little post-it note that says this is the side I add on it's especially when you start using two hole beads like super duos mm -hmm. um, or tiles you can get very confused like where do I add the bead so just if when you first start out get yourself a post-it note so I am going to do um, the beginning with macrame uh, and and then I'm going to show you where you use a needle and you're going through um, single, you're not using double. But this is the same stitch that you could use with KO doubled. Um, so you have one, I'm going to macrame to start, so I have a really long piece um, and, and you can always add a thread and we have a, a skill builder on how to add a thread. Mm -hmm. I have a short side, I'm coming under here with my long and my short I'm just going to, just so that I can ground myself, I'm just going to tie one overhand knot right here. Just to tighten it. Yeah. And then I'm going to do about, I don't know, uh, I'm looking at the button, and I probably should have had this all done, but I'm going to show you. I just have to do enough macrame stitches to get to where the button stops and starts. So, right. And because that macrame that you're doing kind of adds... When you add the loop, that's where the loop is going to be sitting. Right. Right? Right. So, so you need a nice surface for that. Um, we, could <clears throat> we could talk about, uh, you know, how to macrame. We do have skill builders on it. We have lots of videos. Right now I'm just going to um, yeah, the macrame, move along yeah, with this. The, so ma the macrame knot, and you guys, it's on. We have, I printed out... Um, I think I printed out. We've got so many handouts here. It's so exciting. Um, we have the the how to macrame. I actually didn't print it out, but it's in the list um, where you can go and you can watch the video. And it's just a series of half hitch knots. And we use that macrame stitch um, in a lot of our projects. We use it in our Bollywood um, bracelet, which is so super fantastic um, but most of the ways that we have started these guys and let me pull um, I'm gonna pull this one oh, I got yeah. a little knot here. Um, Gita's Question. wondering mm -hmm. Janice if you macrame close to the button. Yeah see yeah. I've brought it up so 
I am close to the button, but you want to leave enough air so the button can move. Um, you're always, every time I'm on this wonderful Facebook Live, you're going to hear me talking about making sure you leave room for the thread to breathe. Yeah. That's so important. And I think just uh, that's a good rule of thumb in general. Whenever you add a clasp to a bracelet as well, you know, that's the part, and we pointed it out a little bit last week in pearl knotting, where the clasp or where there's like an elbow joint or a joint that rubs back and forth, that joint needs air around it mm -hmm. so that it doesn't rub against the thread or mm -hmm. rub against the end tip or any of that. So a little bit of air is always a good rule of thumb. Okay, so <laughs> let, let me just stop for a second. I've got enough of the, the macrame mm -hmm. done. If you wanted to use a thread double like KO and you want to go back and forth double, you would use a size 10 or 12 seed bead needle. Mm -hmm. um, I had some already threaded, some KO. Oh, oh, here we go. Already threaded. And can, you, can everyone see this? It's this is the this is the Let KO. You could, you, uh, you could oh, use, bead spill. Beads yeah. down. <laughs> you could beads use, down. You could use a seed bead, a 10 or a 12. You would use your thread double. Mm -hmm. You would bring the tails together and you would knot them. And then up at the top here, if we can come back to this, Grace, you would have one end. This would be the tails. You'd have one end short, and this would be double. This would be the long one with the needle. So it's the same thing, but your thread is doubled. And you've locked your needle in place so it doesn't come off as you're, la as you're doing yeah, the you're infinity like, stitch. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so you start with your needle already on mm -hmm. before you start your macrame. But now I can go in and I can add my needle. And the best needle for this kind of laddering, if you're going to do it single stitch, which is what this is, is this um, collapsible eye needle. It's, it's better than the flexible eye because this, once, once you put it on wherever you want it, like I want, oh, I have to, I need new glasses. Um, once you decide where you want it, like if I want it there, it just locks in place. Right, and that you're not little going, loop at the tip. Where's my needle? Mm -hmm. I just, you're bringing it through the beads. Where's my needle? Where's my needle? So um, I'm going to uh, take this now and I'm going to just clip this. I always have binder clips. You could use a little tape. I'm just going to bring this down here because I don't, I want to have the first few, um, actually. Uh, guys, could I have a little scotch tape? Do you have some scotch tape there? Oh, you want me thank to grab you. it? I can. No, uh, you got Jen's it. Jen, got it. thank Thanks. you, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Okay, so I'm just going to put this, I'm, I, I, I don't want to cut it now and lose it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use glue if I don't have to. So I'm just taping this down. I have my needle, and this is, this is my side to add. I'm sorry, I don't think I can do it upside down <laughs> well, today. Well, um, I've tested all of the, my beads. These are the beads I'm mm -hmm. using to make the uh, Spanish moss bracelet, which is going up tomorrow. I have four millimeter blue tortoise. I have six millimeter outlook, which is green garnet. And I have the little tiny antique copper hex beads. Mm -hmm, little shadows. So, right. And little shadows. I forgot that's what we call them. So I'm going to start with one bead. And I've checked that I can, and I'm using size 3 tough cord. Um, I could use with this two. I could also use one and do it double if I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to string that on. So I'm adding from this side. That's my only add side. This side. Right, that side. So there's there's my bead, right? So then I'm going to just go under the leather. And I, I, I want, where's the thing I have? Oh, let me put the KO in here. I want to open this up a little so that I can. That's a really smart tip. Yeah. That's a, no, ex oh, sorry, Grace. No extra charge for that. No, that's a, yeah. that is so a great I'm tip. just, I'm just. 
putting that in there where it's going to live. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm going to just lift it up a little bit. And I'm going to go through it again, holding the tension. And I'm going to bring it, I'll move my in much need of a manicure thumb in just a second. <laughs> oh, we have working hands, Janice. Yeah, we do. Okay, so then let me pull my, that cord out of the way. And nestling that bead just right, you know, that tiny little bead, like I was saying earlier, it starts to make that taper right. just it, perfect. And it takes a, a couple of beads for it to work. Now the important thing is going under. So um, if you don't go under, you're also going to um, uh, find that you go, oh, why is my bead popping out? So I'm going under again, and then now I'm going to add two of those beads. Um, now the design that Robin did, she did a single row, but I want to show how you um, do a double. Yeah, so wait, I want this was supposed to be taped down. So let me tape it down onto the actual pad so it's not going to. So now I put the bead on, I'm going to go under. I put the beads on the two beads. I now have the two beads. I'm going to go back through. Mm -hmm. um, if you use like a seed bead needle and you're working with super duos, you can at this point, you don't even have to have this really tight at this point. You can go like this. You can bring your needle underneath. You always want to go underneath. Oh, that's a slick little trick. Right and there. then you just make sure you keep the tension with the thread that's already come this way pressed on top of the beads and pull through. And so essentially what you're doing is you guys you're looming sort of it's the same yeah. kind of thing with just like a single channel, a single right. um right. a single warp. Right. So um so then I'll put two more of these and um you actually have a question. Sure. Um do you always recommend doubling the thread when using Tef Cord 1, or is a single strand ever adequate? Yeah, the answer is yes, I recommend it, and yes, it's okay to use it single. And we have um, the, the beauty of using it single, though, is whether you do the traditional laddering or the infinity, in, inside the bead you will have two threads. Mm -hmm. So you have the thread going and you have the thread coming. And so within the bead you have that extra strength. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be doubled so that you see all that thread on the outside. On the sides. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, a matter of preference. But tough cord one, as long as you don't stress it and you don't find it starting to fray, you It'll be hold okay. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also want to make sure tension is very important. You don't want it so tight. So I can go like this and I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to pop the needle under like that. Then I'm going to tighten it up, hold it down, and I'm letting and my needle, through. I don't know, Grace, if you can pull out and show this. My needle is just sitting there. I have you want to get all your tools out of the way because your thread can get, go around. Everybody out there who's laddered knows your thread can get caught on any number of things. Mm -hmm. um, there we so. go. There we go. So now we have, that's, that's it. There you go. That's the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And at this point, I could do a couple more and then cut this. Right, because what you're doing is you're kind of locking this this thread, you guys, remember, this was the other side of Janice's macrame thread. Yeah. And so she's kind of locking it in place. Maybe a few more passes, it'll be secure, and you don't have yeah. to worry about it. If you don't want that, because, you know, you don't really see it, but if you don't like that, then I would say, um, you know, put the glue up here, and then cut it close, mm -hmm. and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so while you're playing with that, I mm -hmm. want to share something <clears throat> over here real quick. 
So I've been going along and laddering, and with my two, with my two ends, when you don't have a needle, the way that I do this is, you know, my threads are coming out below my leather, and this is tough cord number three that I'm using, and this is one of our Padre beads. beads. The holes are a little bit bigger. What I like about this is where I where the beauty of this stitch for me comes. See how when I'm tightening it up, I'm tightening it up, and then I can see that it's going to pop down into place, and then kind of like uh, Janice popped her needle on through, I open this up and I just pop my thread through here, and I pop my thread through here, mm -hmm. and this is where I need to just push the tension up, again, not too tight, but then I can just see if, if that tension is working, if it's right. And if I don't want to do it with my finger, again, I could have my little tough cord um, spool right here, and uh, it's all good to go. Now, if I want to move this up and around and move up to expose, because I'm starting to get kind of further down here, so I'm going to kind of loosen everything up, loosen it up, and take it out of its little space here. And I can also kind of bend the board a little bit to do that. And I'm just going to come through and work this all the way around. Easier said than done. Uh, well, if you used a design board if you had used a design board and I just move this around and I can expose, there it goes, I can expose more of my leather to start working. I don't need that bulky design board, Janice. Jen? Jen there we Brown. go. I'm going to just grab some two hole beads. I oh, just yeah, I show. can grab them for you. If That's you okay. You're, you're good. Yeah, you're on camera. Oh. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> so see that you guys have exposed some more of this. Now what I can do with my ends is I just kind of tuck everything back in so it's nice and tight so I don't need, you know, a binder clip or other business. I'll get all of my extra threads and I'll put them right in the side here. Like so, maybe. Christina thought your comment was funny, Janice, about, well, if you use a design board. Right. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. And you uh, know. Kelly Molitor says hi from Alaska. Hey, hi, Kelly. Kelly. Hi, Kelly. And did, did Ke Kelly, did you ever get your, uh, your gift with purchase that we meant to send you? Yes. Also, <laughs> Cindy says... She prefers using the macrame board, but she likes using the bigger one. Oh, do you uh, like the bigger one? Because there's more space. You yeah, to there's around. more space. I'm a big fan of this mini board because, again, like I said, I, I'm a jet setter. I know. And when I travel to my classes and stuff, it's kind of, you know, it's comforting when you're on the road and you're able to kind of have your little project with you. Plus, you know, flight attendants love it when you bead on board. They always want to know. They do. I've met so many flight attendants that are beaders that it's it's always good for um, some good conversation on the road, for sure. So there we go. I'm all set back up. I can tuck my thread kind of away, out of the way. I don't need tape. And this little extra where I added thread earlier, that's up here. And now um, I'm ready to go with some more. <laughs> and I um, also, you can open up that little channel. Whoops. I can um, open one up here and I can pop this leather out so you can see how this keeps my little channel open mm -hmm. here as well. Just like so. Oh, Sandra says thank you for the 35 giving thread cord kit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm Kita glad. Says, she says bead on board, and she also says she uses a fancy lid for a bead box that she has for a board. Oh. And Megan says she uses a jelly roll pan. 
Oh, oh yeah. those are all course, great ideas. Of course. Those are all great. Yes. You know, anything, the cool thing about being able to, um, to kind of really understand this stitch is you can repurpose what you might have at home to work on. Hmm. And we have a question now from Julie who uh -huh. asks, how do you prevent the beads from moving or crowding up after the bracelet is finished? I always make sure tension is correct. Julie, we're going to send you your $5 for mm -hmm. ans asking just the question that we wanted. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. If you weren't a plant, we actually wanted this question. Um, so could that's I start something, yeah, yeah, because this is something that I learned from you that I think is a great, great so, tip. So, with any kind of jewelry that you're making, we always seem to make jewelry, especially with laddering, on a straight line. Mm -hmm. And we need to factor in that after we're done stringing it on a straight line, it needs to wrap. It needs more air. Um, it's very similar, I always say, like walking across a parking lot, it's always faster to go at a straight line and a diagonal rather than going to the corner and then making a left, <laughs> which takes more steps. What we just have to do before you close off whatever you're doing, you need to take it off the board. You haven't finished the last little bit mm -hmm. of macrame, or as you go, you take it off the board and you wrap it around mm -hmm. and you see how it goes, and you'll start to learn how much tension you need. Yeah, and you can. We have there more we than one sample that's mm -hmm. been made where there wasn't enough space between the different sections of beads that are just like too bunched. It was made on a straight line and then knotted off and then wrapped without taking it off mm -hmm. first, wrapping, wrapping it, putting it back on the board, and then closing mm -hmm. it off. And that'll give you, and you can see this beautiful sample that Robin made us. This is our morning snow sample. You can see how much movement there is there. And even when your beads look tight visually, there still needs to be that movement. One of the ways that you can tell when a piece is too tight, and I think it's in, oh, it's actually right here on your wrist in this oh, midnight snow, yeah, yeah. or midnight snow, I want to mm -hmm. share that. Um, that pop-up. Yes. Thank you. So How that, do we prevent pop-up? Yeah. So you can see right here at the end, that was Linda, like your question right there. Was Linda, right, Linda? Was, uh, Julie. 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 That was your question right there. So see how this little end bead likes to pop up. So this was a little tight. Now the way that you could prevent this is by simply tapering down. See how this one ends here, how we have that big six millimeter and we taper down to one of our little shadows? If we had just simply tapered down here, this bead right. wouldn't be popping up. There was right. no triangle of mm -mm. space left mm -mm. Um, before the end knot, mm -hmm. and then there wasn't a smaller bead to merge right. to the knot. To help so the make two, that transition. You need both of them. You need mm -hmm. a little air of a triangle, and you also need a taper down bead. Mm -hmm. uh, and it well, makes a world guys, of difference. This is not a question from a viewer, mm -hmm. but for instance, <laughs> with the with what you were showing with the shadow bead. Mm -hmm. Could you have two beads and then one bead, like a like a, a even a more gradual mm -hmm. taper for that's, sure. That's what I started yeah. here. I oh, went from right. one to two to two, and then mm -hmm. to the big to bead. the larger beads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm showing here. Is okay if yeah, I show you now it. the two hole mm -hmm. bead. So we have here um, checkmates tiles. Um, yeah, this is the same thing with super duos and tile beads. Um, and, and I mean, Half everyone tiles. is doing two hole beads. Uh, it's the hot new thing to make. So I'm going to add another two hole bead. I've, I've got one on already. So here I'm going to add, and I'm always adding on this side. Then I'm going to come underneath and I'm getting around paper clips. Now, everyone out there, trust me, everybody watching is going to want to go through this second hole. Right. Do not. Do not. Resist. Go through, go, going back through, you want to go back through 
your first hole just very as if important. You were looming. Yeah, very important. Go back through your first hole. Now the other place where we make this mistake, I'll show you, and I'm sure uh, everyone out there. So it doesn't even matter if my thread is getting a little caught right now. I can organize it. You can calm down because you can organize it and then hold hold down, um, open the loop if you need to. Sometimes it gets twisted, more so the tough cord than let's say if you were using a, um, okay, so I got a little knot in here. It's actually just twisted, didn't even get a knot. So I'm coming back in, and if I were using like KO or I were even using a tough cord number one, I'm using three, this would be so easy. It would glide through. I used three because I wanted to show you mm -hmm. and, so and everyone to really see it. Well. So I'm on the top now. What's the next thing everybody does is they just go through hole number two when what you have to do is you have to go under. Don't forget to go under before you go through the second hole. So when we go on next week, we're going to talk about um, the herring bone stitch, stitch yeah. with laddering, and um, then this builds this builds on that with the the next two hole beat. Now, what do I have to do again? Anyone out there? Anywhere? Got to go under. Underneath. You that's have right. to go under before you go back through. Because we've got to capture the that leg that right. that um, right that side of the but if you leather. don't that's a that's one way you it, it um, pops up mm -hmm. so I'm going back um, and next week we're going to show how to add, um, how to add a thread, thread. Mm -hmm. later on in a ladder project um, because it's a great I, you have a great yeah tip I to have make kind, of kind of like in, so you can't invisible. see it yeah mm -hmm. I have a way so you can't see it and you can also huh. find it, you guys, if you're antsy, you can find it in our skill builder section. We've right. linked it to right. um, this Facebook so, landing page. Um, so I'm, I, I would like to answer any questions you might yeah. have about, about doing this. Um, well, Christina says thank you for showing the pop-up uh, issue with the 6 millimeter because she just bought the supplies for the midnight uh -huh. wrap bracelet, so she'll be sure to transition up and down. Mm -hmm. Debbie says that tapering is the perfect solution. Yeah. And Julie says the idea of wrapping it on the wrist before fi finalizing it and that she'll use a mandrel when making it for customers. Oh, uh -huh. that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then Susan says, with all your tips and tricks, I have she has no excuses. She must pull the kit out of her stash <laughs> yes. and give it a whirl. Thanks so much. Yes. That's right. Yes. And we want to see it when it's done. And one last thing. Yeah. A Susan from the UK says, you guys are amazing and thank you for all the tips. Oh, oh you're welcome. Oh. You're amazing too, oh. Susan. Oh, oh good good times. True. Good times. Good one. <laughs> thank so, you. Um, so I want to show, some? we have a couple of things. We have some things we want to show to um, finish with, but I want to show the rest of the sneak peeks of the projects that we're putting up uh, the other laddering projects. Oh, okay. Can yeah. we show those yeah. before we before we wrap yes. this wrap this show yeah. up literally? And then we have the um, giveaways. We do. We do. We have some right. giveaways, and we have look at there's all this thread here. Some know, giveaways well, that's and me. just get have, your thread on your side. Know, get your get I that know. board. So Good we Lord. haven't asked anyone their preference. Yeah. So what do you guys mm. think? Do, what preferences which do you board? have? Which board? Which board? You know, last week when we both. talked, you, need you both. do. When we spoke about thread versus wire, there were so many of you thread people out there. But there were a few diehard wire fans out there. there and a few. We've got a couple. We've got some great um, wire stuff actually coming up soon, you guys. We've got some really cool earring, some fresh earring findings that we're adding. Um, Do you want to tell like everyone about the classes you're teaching in Tucson? Yeah, Do you wanna, like, I can. You know, let me save that for next. Let me tease them. You can go. Yes, I am doing some classes yes. we're teaching in Tucson. Um, actually, if you go to the website, it's the Jogs Show, J-O-G-S, Jogs, Jogs, uh, I think it's jogs.com, and you go right there, you click on the classes link, and you'll see there's teachers that are coming from all over the country um, that go to the Jogs Show. 
um, to teach. So I'm in really, really good right. company. So I'm actually teaching some of my signature soldering classes there. So that's coming up in February. We're going to have a really good time. So I'll, I'll make a link to that. Um, you can also go, if, if I, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it, you can jump right over to my website. Right, um, right. KateRichbird.com, and you can find links for all of my classes there as well. So thanks, Janice, for that You're little welcome. shout out. I love, You're I love that. Yeah. Question, okay. Gracie. So before I get to the results, Jan said she missed how you guys started the project, and she's also asking where she can get a bead board. Oh, so Jan, just so you know, all of our Facebook Live broadcasts are archived right here where you're watching on our Facebook page. If you go to the videos tab right on the side, you'll see a playlist of all of our Facebook Live videos. You'll also find them on our homepage. There's a link that clicks to our Facebook. You'll see those. Usually that video up on our site happens by Thursday um, because we have to download it and then upload it. Um, and also they always live on our beadshop.com um, YouTube channel. So you can watch it over and over and over. And to get the board, you could just go to beadshop.com beadshop and com. put in the search tool mm -hmm. macrame mm -hmm. and the board will come up. And Gita has posted it. So oh, thanks. thank you, Gita. Oh. Always a help. <laughs> now we have um, some of these laddering bracelets. These are the projects that are going up this week, you guys. This is the one that Janice was um, kind of demoing the different techniques for, for Spanish moss. This guy, this pretty one in these sand colors, this is called sand dunes. And then this one here in these blues with these great um, uh, Picasso seed beads. This one's called night sky. So there are three really delicious flavors of wrap bracelets. And I think mm -hmm. this is like a five Seven. 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 A delicious seven wrap. Seven. Maybe so we could beautiful. do like 20. I don't know. The how, biggest, how many, the longest How wrap. many has, it, mm -hmm. has anyone done more than seven? We want to see Yeah, it. we want to see it. Like a 10 wrap. A 10 wrap sounds just perfect. It sounds delicious. It does. So um, before we sign off, yeah, what's the, what's the count? I was just going to tell you. So the first two people said they, they love both the macrame and the the, the uh, bead boards. Mm -hmm. Then we had two for bead boards. All right. But the deep one is better. One oh, yes. yeah, the yes. deep. Yeah. Then we have, I like the design board, but we'll try the macrame board. Another person says, I use a soft one while traveling, but the hard one at home. All so right. use this guy All when right. traveling, that one at home. So it does look like Three everyone's boards, being nice and bead tray. Nice and diplomatic um, with us. Macrame board. And let's see here. Feed board. Great. So it's kind of a mix. Yeah, of it's a mix. And I think that, like you were saying earlier, Janice, I think they both really, really come in handy. Um, and they're great for, just depends on where you're being and what you're right. doing. I, I think you need both. Yeah. Someone says they like the macrame board because their hand is weak and they can't use binder clips. Oh, oh. that's a good, yeah. Uh, could I see <laughs> the large macrame board? Can someone grab one? So we can just show that so you see yeah, the you can two see the difference, difference in the two sizes. Mm -hmm. So this is the um, big one. Yeah. So. And the small one. So yeah, if you do like more space or more room, this big macrame board is a nice yeah. one to use. But um, like I said, this fits right in my computer right. case. I love it. Right. It's good. So. Um, right. so you guys, we do have, as always, this is the this is the fun part of our broadcast. First, we wanted to share with you, um, we're doing a special uh, Facebook Live store-wide promotion, but it's one day only. So if you guys are watching this after, uh, today after Wednesday, the 7th um, of December, I'm sorry that this offer isn't valid after that. Yeah. It's good today only. But if you shop today with us for your special Facebook code, um, you put in FB25, uh, right in the coupon code in your order and you'll save 25% site-wide. So if you do want a macrame board, if you want one of these deep dish boards or anything, you can get 25% off of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, we've got some giveaways, but also we do a lot of great subscriber-only content in our newsletter. So if you haven't gone to beadshop.com and our newsletter subscriber, do that, do that, do that 
and you can get not only great Facebook exclusive content here on our broadcasts, but great subscriber content that's exclusive to our newsletter Well, that's what we did at Thanksgiving. We had doorbusters we did. only through the newsletter. Only through the newsletter, yeah. and that's what Kelly that's, got yeah. some of those. Yeah, so it's it's a cool way that we like Speaking to give Kelly, things away. She likes both boards. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Awesome. <laughs> but I know. You know what Kelly Monitor really I, likes. I really know what Kelly likes. All right, yeah. well. So we've got a great giveaway, you guys. We have, you can decide, we're going to give away 10 in total. Um, so if you Could go... I have the chocolate board? Yeah. Oh, I sorry. Yes. If you put in your notes, you can either say, give me my mini macrame board, or give me my satin chocolate board. And you could just put, give me my satin, or give me what Janice likes. <laughs> yes. Or yes. just give me. <laughs> well, they have to know. Well, they'll they have know. To know. They'll know, give me means this. Right. Yeah, they'll know yes. that. Well, give me my chocolate board, right. give me my macrame board. You it's choose. so nice. Look yeah, at that, it's everybody. It's so it flexible. Really... <laughs> <laughs> and easy to travel with. Oh, but it's so elegant and, and it's beautiful. So, it's so kicky. Yeah. <laughs> Sporty. Yeah. I don't know. So you guys can choose your giveaway. So right. we'll give a total um, of 10. If it's ten. 5 and 5, or if it's 3 and 7. Is that right? Or just 10 and 0. 10 and 0. 10 and 0. 10 and it's 0. True. It's true. Remind them they have to do it after they place an order. Yeah. yeah. So just to remember, you guys, thank you, Grace, that after you place an order, you do need to place an order. But right. in your order notes, that's where this goes. So right. you can put in your coupon code for 25% off store wide. And then in the order notes, give me my mini macrame board. Um, and we'll send this right off to you. Right. Yeah, so stop putting it in the Facebook. Feed. Yes. So you guys, it doesn't count in the Facebook, in the Facebook, those of you who have, who have watched this before, it doesn't ca count in our Facebook um, comments, unfortunately. Uh, it's right. when you go to our website, place your Beadshop. order, beadshop.com, put in your code for savings, and in your order notes, add, give me my mini macrame board. Right. And, um, and then we'll just add it into your order right. as a gift from us to you. Right. Because we are so appreciative of having you guys order. Yeah. And thank you to everyone who shared. Our oh my gosh. Video. Yes. Yeah. Thank you and for sharing. Thank you, Jan. She's apologizing. This is her first time here, so she put it in the Facebook feed, but she really Oh she she gave us a lot of comments. Oh, oh great. great. Well thank you. Well welcome. You know, it's yeah. so cool. We've met so many new friends and we've seen so many of your first orders from these broadcasts. So we really, really do appreciate it. You know, we're a small business here um, at beadshop.com. You're looking at a quarter or the, a third of the work population here for our company. So we super, super appreciate Jan it. Jan said you guys were awesome. The first time oh, visitors thank said you. you guys were awesome. Thanks. Well, Jan, you know, I just have to say I don't know how to use Facebook. My daughter Ashley is saying, no, Mom. That's not where you post that, Mom. No. <laughs> well, you know, you're, you're, you're getting uh, with the program, JP. I'm trying, it's all right. I'm trying. Notice how, welcome, Jan. Yeah, and notice how I'm still holding this up. Yes. Janice has abandoned hers completely, <laughs> well, you know. Oh. But anyway, so thanks, okay, you guys. Thanks, everybody. For have a great watching. week. Yes, yeah. have a great week. You can keep sharing. You yes. can keep posting. Ask questions. I like to go back through right. and we'll answer them as well um and as always if you do have any specific um questions you'd like to shout out you can always email me at kate uh, at beadshop.com and we'll be glad to answer those right. um so next week we're going to continue on this odyssey right. adding a thread doing some um infinity super stitch duos. with the super duos and um the herringbone stitch, the herringbone stitch yeah. and we're going to have some kits up yes. next week yes. um, for those lauren hartley right. pieces right. but in the meantime keep your eye out for these guys they'll be posted <clears throat> tomorrow go and get your newsletter subscription if you haven't already and I guess that's it. Yeah. So it's time to drink some coffee. Right. Have a great week, you guys. Right. Good times. Good times. <laughs> All right. Bye See bye. you guys next week.